We're on strike. This is Corey, and this is the uh, the podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob Aquaman. <laughs> Just slid right through that one. Aquaman hit one billion dollars this week. Ugh. You want me to say something about it? Nope, nope. Just, uh, <laughs> just enjoying the moment. Talk about stupid people with money. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, for this episode for episode two forty nine of the Other Anthem podcast. Coming to you from the hashtag OTA LA studios, high above the one ten freeway in beautiful downtown Los Angeles, California. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank you for watching the live stream on Facebook. Thank you for downloading on your podcatcher of choice. Thank you for rating and subscribing and doing all these things because they're all appreciated by us very much. So thanks for rating and reviewing. Yep. Uh, you can also find more O the Anthem at, uh, t- on Twitter and Instagram at O the Anthem. And of course, Facebook.com forward slash O the Anthem, where hopefully you're watching the live stream of the show right now, but where you can find all kinds of O the Anthem stuff. Of course, you would be remiss if you didn't check out YouTube.com forward slash O the Anthem, where you can find th- these videos and more, uh, a whole bunch of content there as well. And uh, finally, uh, O the Anthem.com, where you can find basically everything I've mentioned beforehand. Yeah. And even more. I like, I like the word remiss. You'd be remiss? Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. That's one of those uh, 850 uh, yeah. SAT words, right? I think it's a little less than that, but you know. Yeah, probably. Uh, but of course, if you want to be a part of the show, you can join us for the live stream here on Facebook.com forward slash O the Anthem and comment in the uh, chat. We will read the, out those comments as they come up. Uh, or you can, uh, if you're listening to this later on your podcatcher of choice, you can send us a message or a voicemail at 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 443-219-7595 and let us know what you thought. Indeed. Yes. So, uh, Aquaman hit a billion dollars. Hmm. Yeah. So everyone in the United States, ooh, everyone around the world is dumb except Corey. <laughs> because Corey is the only smart person. No, I'm sure there, like the I'm movie. sure there's a lot of people who spent money on it and then felt bad about it after the fact. Uh, I haven't heard any of that. So that would be news to me. Hmm. The mm. only negative review I heard was on the uh, Corey Baker filmmaker on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. uh, and the comments did not seem to disagree with the sentiment of the video maker. There so. was there was one person who who adamantly disagreed with me, but mm-hmm. then uh, uh, I got a lot of likes on that <coughs> video, so I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. The likes outnumber the dislikes hmm. by quite a healthy margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the comments, though, the comments, the people who took the time to type something out. Not just hit a button. It's three to one on the likes for that one. Mm-hmm. And just be, uh, there was one that liked it and then one person who didn't. So it was 50-50 on the comments. Okay. So whatever you say, I, I, listen, and I, I don't take any great joy in, in saying mean things about a movie and I don't, it, I don't do it for sport. Like a lot of people, like there's the, uh, we had a big laugh about the Pixels review. There was some YouTuber who was just like, you know, like the just going into the like uh, ramped up obscenity of mm-hmm. it all. And uh, I, I don't I don't feel the need to do that because there's people who spent time on this and worked on it and stuff like that. And I, I don't I, I don't feel like it's right to just like carpet bomb an entire <laughs> an entire film production. Mm-hmm. But the problems with Aquaman were so easily identifiable. And so like it, 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 it would you would be it'd be like if you're talking about a, a football game where it, say you're a Bears fan. Cody Mark Parkey misses the field goal at the end of the game. Yeah. His only job is to make that kick. It's not like the Katie Nolan bit I showed you. Oh, where and it's you like say fans and stuff like you're, that. And you log on and say, I could have made that. Yeah, yeah, kick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's a tough thing to do. But mm-hmm. like at the yeah. end of the day, you're you're there to to perform. So if the one person who doesn't perform is the kicker, mm-hmm. then it's right to say, man, the Bears could have maybe won this game if Cody Parker didn't miss that kiss kick. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and a similar situation could be, I, I could say the same thing with, <laughs> there were so many things that were wrong that it's clear. It wasn't somebody low on the totem pole. It wasn't like a rogue camera op who was ruining that movie. Yeah. It yeah. was the direction. It was the people above the director. It was the executive board. Whoever in, is in charge of, uh, making sure that the DC cinematic universe goes out there the way that they want it to go. I just failed. Hope, there, I was just, a, there was a, there was a, a executive failing. I just hope. I hope and pray one day you're sitting in a meeting somewhere and they're like, oh, you know, we're really excited to get this project moving. Uh, uh, what's that, Cheryl? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you tweet uh, back in 2018 that uh, James Wan phoned it in Yeah. on the set of uh, Aquaman? Yep, sure did. And you spent uh, 17 minutes ra- ranting about it on mm-hmm. YouTube? I did. Right, well, uh, thanks for coming in. We're... Uh, <laughs> Glad you took the time. We appreciate it. Uh, we validate, uh, have Cheryl validate you on the way out. Yeah. That's going to be uh, the moment. 
I would hope that, listen, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not immune from this. I, I've had people be critical of my work before, mm-hmm. and it's not fun, and it's not anything that anyone likes to hear, but it, I think it's, it's important for the... It, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do with the film reviews is I'm trying to lend my particular insight into the process. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people who review films, uh, there's people who are professional reviewers, like yeah. people who just watch movies <clears throat> and then break it down compared to like, you know, the mise en scene compared to blah, 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 and sure. great artists yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, there's film critics who just have jobs as film critics because someone literally hired them to be the person who writes about movies. Yeah. Uh, and there's, you know, like a ton of people, a ton of fans on YouTube who do it too. I, I think that the, uh, I haven't seen as many people who are filmmakers who decide to do it. And I think that, it gives me more of an opportunity to sort of talk about it as like an organism, like how, how something like this could have possibly gone wrong or the things that could have been done to fix it. And a lot of times I, I end up saying things like, you know, it was a really good effort, but it didn't live up to this particular, you know, they were, they were going for this, but it didn't quite get there. Sure. Yeah. I think I said about like uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, like, for a movie that's so much about like how Queen's music rocks, like the music, the actual mixing on the soundtrack didn't rock that much. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't like feel atmospheric around you. Like it didn't feel like a special version of listening to Queen. It's just listen to like somebody put Queen on on the stereo. Okay, you know. Okay. Just take note, of Hollywood. <laughs> just take note of all of <laughs> all these the comments. terrible things Corey's saying. All of these comments. Yeah. Just take note. All right, well. Uh, it doesn't seem to hurt a lot of, <laughs> you know, I, I think more and more as we, as we live in the Trump era, mm-hmm. I realized that, uh, it, it, it used to be that you, you tried to do everything you possibly could to not have like a negative reputation of yourself. Yeah. But yeah. I think there's a certain number of people that there's like a, a threshold of negative criticism that you can get to. Okay. And as long as there's enough people to like back up the other side of it, then it kind of works out. Uh, so like Kevin Hart. Like, uh, yeah. he's got just enough people backing him that they're like, eh, well, I mean, I'm saying like Kevin Hart doesn't have to worry about not working this year right. because of uh, he's got enough people supporting all the things that he does to make up for the people who are now feel burned by him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like it, it, it's just sort of like a give and take, like at what point, you know, like I, <laughs> obviously I don't know what happened in Aquaman. I wasn't, I wasn't, all I can see is the I mean, finished product. Based on what I, I heard, it sounded like you did have some kind of insight. I can't, what I can't tell you what happened on set and mm-hmm. I can't tell you like to what degree James Wan might've been putting out more fires than he's ever had to put out in his life. And you know, it, it's, <laughs> you, you know, that one person who works in your office or works at, you know, your restaurant or whatever, where the place is who just doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And you're just like, why does this person have a job that those people don't just stop? (laughs) You know, they don't, they don't just get to your office. They get to all the offices Yeah, somewhere in Warner brothers, somewhere in all the studios. There's some, you know, fuck up who doesn't deserve to have a job. And he's out there going like, you know, uh, I don't think Nicole Kidman's got to age in this Aquaman movie at all. I think she can just stay the same age as everybody else, even though everyone else in the movie ages Mm -hmm. and just be like, are we really going to do this, Jim? Are we going to have a whole day where we're going back and forth on it? It's just like, I just don't see the point why we would age Nicole Kidman and like try and make her look older. I mean, like she would, we would rather make her look younger. So it's like, uh, I don't have time for this. She shouldn't look younger, though. No, but she I'm saying... ages uh, appropriately for a mother. She didn't age at all in yeah, that movie. Did. No, everyone else aged except for her. She was the exact same age as she was in the beginning as she was in the end. Does your mom... How much different did they your had mom a look young, between, between They had a young Jason 20. Momoa and they had an old Jason Momoa. Yeah. To show that at least, you know, like 20 years had passed. Yeah, 20 years had passed. Yes. So it, does my mom look different now than she did 20 years ago? Yeah. Yes. She no, looks. <laughs> my mom looks almost exactly the same as she did when I was a kid. <laughs> I think if you looked at a picture of your mom, like side by side, I over was the, looking <laughs> at her. I mean, she, I mean, she, I looks, mean, we're going through the whole Facebook, you yes. know, like first profile picture versus. Yeah. And you guys are all idiots. First of all, I hate all of you. <laughs> I hate all of you. Stop it. Uh, basically my, my timeline is nothing but these pictures. And I'm convinced that somebody reached out to Mark Zuckerberg and said, you know what? Um, this AI that we're programming to, uh, to learn people's faces isn't doing such a good job. Well, why is that? Well, uh, because you know, people age and people we... age over time. We can't teach it how to look for those changes. <laughs> well, if only we could figure out a way to make people post a picture of themselves when they first joined and a picture of themselves right now. 
No, you know what? We can't do that. Thanks, BuzzFeed. Uh, so you guys are all idiots. Um, also, I don't give a fuck what you look like. And how you people are posting, you joined like three years ago. Yeah. You look exactly the same. So, yeah. I, oh, I look at so the difference between 21 and 27. They, yeah, they have like 2009. The one that really bothers me is like the people who like uh, posted something from... You know, like, oh, here's me in 2009 and here's me today. And then you in 2009 is like nine years old. And I'm just like, God damn, I feel old as shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just see a little girl with braces. On a, nine the next years picture, ago. You mean next nine picture th- is a super hot model. I'm just like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like nine years ago. So you mean what, like uh, 96, 97? <laughs> what? 2009? How did that happen? All right. Uh, yeah, but no, I should, it's... I should, I should just do another one on Facebook where it's just like me as a baby and me as an adult just be like, here's my 10-year. <laughs> uh, the, the new funny thing to do is to post the uh, the sperm picture yeah. and the picture of you. Like, right. Yeah, this is me 30 years ago. I um, still think I look good. You're not funny either. <laughs> oh, you guys are the worst. All of you are the worst. And every time I see one of these things pop up, all I can think is... There are too many people. We need a new plague. I just need to wipe. Either I need to just be wiped out and that way I don't have to deal with it or we can wipe out a bunch of the stupid people. One or the other. Yeah. Um, speaking of the wiping out the stupid people, let's uh, do this. And of course, by stupid people, I don't mean the fans. What I mean is someone over at uh, the uh, the Baltimore Ravens Sports organization, yes, must be listening to the podcast. Yeah, they they must have they, they must have heard the constant chance of Corey is right coming yes. from outside the castle walls. Yes, of course, of course. Now, uh, why why would that be, Corey? Why? Uh, because after after much much uh, consternation on our parts, we, we uh, Marty Morningwig has finally been let go da, as da, the da, offensive da. coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, uh, Greg Roman mm-hmm. is coming in. Uh, I believe last week what I had said was. Uh, you want somebody who has taken a quarterback before and had a proven success, a proven track record of being able to take them from like, you know, pretty good to exemplary. Right. And you yeah. wanted somebody specifically who would fit in within Lamar Jackson's skill set. Mm-hmm. Skill set. Uh, funny enough, uh, Marty Morty <laughs> was the coach of the Falcons way back when, when Michael Vick was. Oh, really? Yeah. He was the offensive coordinator of the Falcons at the time. But it's okay because we replaced him with a a better option, I feel. Uh, The guy who was the offensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers when Colin Kaepernick and then went to the Super Bowl. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. So Gregor Roman is getting uh, bumped up from quarterback coach to offensive coordinator. And and you guys uh, may not have known, but he was already with the mm -hmm. team as the quarterback's coach. Yep. Yes. Uh, So uh, does this... But ding dong, Marty's dead. We can move on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're moving on. Yes. Uh, and of course, uh, the question is what happens with Joe? Obviously, he's not going to be on the team next year. Trade. Uh, they're going to try and trade him yeah. somehow. I imagine that. Uh, there's a lot much, of teams. How much the. I mean, there's a lot of teams who are always looking for a quarterback. Yeah. You know, it, it, it could probably end up being like one of those things like. Uh, uh, the Redskins usually end up taking some washed up guy like Donovan McNabb. Remember when yeah. they did that? Well, like, and uh, I read a story that was just like uh, Joe. Will and probably... I don't think Joe's like washed up. I no. just think that his best years are behind him. But uh, I think it would be interesting to see him with the new team and try and yeah. uh, reclaim some glory. And, uh, and I wish the best to him. I did read a story that said that he's going to benefit because uh, it's not a great draft class this year as far as quarterbacks go. Mm hmm. And, uh, in fact, there are, are like, there's like two or three juniors who are talking about going early just because the class is so bad that they, so here's the math. They're not the best quarterbacks in the nation, but they're good enough to, they're good enough to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So if they go this year instead of next year, the likelihood they get drafted late in the first round or by a better team is better. If they prove themselves more in their senior year, then they're likely to get drafted by like, oh, I don't know, the Cleveland Browns and then end up like. uh, I have no calculus to back this up. Yes. Uh, It's just sort of how I seem to remember these things going. So if I'm horribly wrong on this, then forgive me. I'm just uh, uh, posturing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like every single year, three or four quarterbacks get taken in the first round. Like a minimum of like three or four. Oh, four or five. Four or five usually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, something in that in that general area. I mean, I like think even Lamar in the was the worst e- quarterback year. Like yeah. in the year where they keep saying like there's no quarterbacks to be taken. They're all, they're nobody, no like, you know, Hall of Fame talent. 
Yeah. Uh, there still seems to be like three <laughs> that well, managed no. to get drafted. But that's what they're saying. They're saying that there are maybe top two top tier quarterbacks mm-hmm. coming out. And right. so these guys may come out because those two are going to go to the like Brown. The Browns aren't going to draft anybody because they yeah. have their guy. But the Browns type team, the one that's Jets or not Jets, even the uh, uh, the Colts, Giants, the Colts, maybe. Well, I mean, I don't Colts think got luck, I know, but so. I don't think that. Well, I mean, he's, is he done for the is he done? He did not look great. He looked great up until the playoffs <laughs> until last week, until yeah. this weekend. Yeah, I guess yeah. he looked all right. Uh, Fifth right, best so like, quarterback in fantasy football. I don't think they're trying really? to get rid of him yet. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Bengals, Bengals uh, who have a question at quarterback, uh, maybe. I mean, Dalton is fine, but getting older and, you know, he, he had a injury this year that yeah. ended his season early. So I'm trying to think of a team. Uh, Jets are probably the best example. I, I, I mean, like, I, you know, Cardinals could use a Cardinals. quarterback. I mean, they took Rosen last year, but he doesn't look in particularly inspiring. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the Raiders would want a quarterback. They could trade Derek Carr. The uh the forthcoming Las Vegas Raiders. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who might be the San Diego Raiders? For a year? Yeah. So uh I don't know if we talked about this. this is a, I don't a, think we did. This is a hysterically amazing uh. story. So uh the Raiders had announced that they're going to move to Las Vegas during last off season. But uh, they're not moving until twenty twenty season. Right. Yeah. Uh, they they just announced last se- last off season that they were going to be moving to Vegas. Yeah. While they were building the stadium, they were going to continue playing in Oakland. Oakland, <laughs> two things lined up. Uh, number one, their lease ended this year at the Coliseum, mm-hmm. so they would have had to renew some new lease to be able to stay for the next two years. Yeah. Uh, which the Coliseum said they didn't want any <laughs> any part of. Uh, and then the second part is the city of Oakland is suing the Raiders. Yes. Uh, so for uh, for leaving. Yeah, for leaving. Yeah. So Oakland's got to get out of town, and now they got to figure out where they're going to play in the meantime until uh, <laughs> they can move into the place in Vegas. Yeah. So they literally will be raiding around <laughs> California. I, think. I was gonna say, I, I, it's, like, <laughs> they got the Mayflower trucks packed, and uh, what they're doing is looking for a home. Uh, now, in uh, less Baltimore fashion, they are not going to cross state lines. It looks like <laughs> they're going to be looking for a place. Nearby. Yeah, so there was talks about uh, having to play in L.A. somewhere. Yeah. So uh, maybe the Rose Bowl or something say, like that. There's, there's more stadiums that could hold a team to yeah. play, like Rose Bowl Stadium. So. Uh, they were talking about like maybe doing like Dodger Stadium or something like that or doing uh, Angel Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also heard talk of uh, them playing in San Diego. And there was also like, I think this wouldn't work out, but they were talking about playing in UNLV stadium for a couple years, but I yeah. think that's out already. So I don't know. It'll be funny to see. <laughs> it's going to be really funny to see like San Diego fans going to Qualcomm or whatever the hell it is called now. Yeah. Uh, to see the Raiders, to see the Raiders yeah. and being like, go Raiders. <laughs> Like just they're gonna for a couple so, years, they're gonna be so passionate about the Raiders for two years just to show the NFL. Like you're like you were we wrong to get rid of us. We we're good. Team. We love football. See, but that wasn't the NFL. That was that's just that the owner. Spanos, yeah. yeah, just the owner. So I mean, but I, I mean, the that, NFL allowed it to happen. I guess is the the other owners allowed it to happen. Yeah, a bunch of rich white guys got together and decided to let their buddy, who's a rich white guy, do what he wanted. Mm-hmm. Oh, big fucking surprise! Uh, <laughs> also known as the history of the Western civilization. There we go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to the topic. Morning wigs out. Roman's in. Um, and uh, Joe will probably find a home. There's a couple of teams that need a good quarterback. Here's my question to you. And I did believe your point was that you doubted that that Roman had any impact on Kaepernick coming in for workouts last year or this year. Last year. What well, was last off two season. years ago? Was was it, it two? Now, I think we're this two, past off season. I think we're two seasons out of him being out of San Francisco. Well, whenever it was. Yeah. But you don't believe that Roman had any input in that. I, I don't know if he was on the coaching staff at the time. Yeah. If he was, then I imagine somebody talked to him and said, like, you know, hey, what do you think about Colin? As con- you know, do you think he'd be a good fit here and stuff? And he yeah. probably, <laughs> I imagine, said nice things if they went to the point where they were trying you to, think- like, work out the contract. Again, I... You know, I, I think that Colin Kaepernick probably would have signed with the Ravens if he if his girlfriend hadn't <laughs> gone <laughs> gone off message there. Yeah. Uh, and that that doesn't seem like it, it, again, that's a perfectly reasonable reason to not get a job if your girlfriend goes off uh, on Twitter. Yeah. But here's a question. Calls, calls the owner a slaveholder, basically. Do you think uh, <laughs> do you think he's got another shot to get Kaepernick back? With the Ravens? Yeah. 
I, that's a because Robert Griffin was under a one year contract. I mean, I think yeah, the idea I mean, like, is he's going to come take, back. But I, I wouldn't say. I mean, I think RG three wants to start somewhere. I doubt that yeah. he's going to get that opportunity. Uh, if the Ravens think that he's good enough to be the backup, then maybe you just draft no, no, some quarterback or you sign some like. If you're RG three though. You know you're not going to start in Baltimore. I, I mean, like unless you're hurt. I mean, like if, unless if you can't, yes. there's only 32 starting quarter, quarterback right. positions. If nobody's willing to ha- offer you one, but then you you're don't gonna know that, have though. to take a backup job. You don't necessarily know that. I mean, but do you sign with the Ravens because you know they're not going to trade you somewhere, or do you go out and play the field and see if you can get a starting job somewhere in a, with a bunch of teams that need some experience? I mean, I I would think that. It's in his best interest to go out there and test the market. I think he came here because he thought Lamar's not ready, and I got a chance to swipe this starting job yeah. from an a, a older quarterback who doesn't move as well. That or, didn't work out. Or we were one of only a couple of teams that made him an offer. I, I mean, like, I think so that's true really the, we, You know, that, that's the thing. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, I want to... I want to direct a Legend of Zelda movie. Yeah, but it's not like just because I said it out loud means that somebody has to o- has to offer me that job. I mean, also the IP. It's sucks, not like the so. power power of positive thinking or something like that. It's it's you 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 have to be goodly enough to get that yeah. that gig. You also have, to have good IP, which that's not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, that's it's very been, true. It's been hours upon <laughs> hours, like. But I think in the end, though, I mean, I think that there's a better chance that Kaepernick comes than Robert Griffin stays. I, I just don't see a world in which he I, is going to stay as a backup. I would, I would say, I would say the high likelihood would be that RG three would stay before Kaepernick really? would come in. Yeah, I, I, I think he wants a starting job, and he thought he was going to have a I chance think, to. I think Kaepernick, Kaepernick is is complicated, uh, as far as like bringing him in as an asset goes, yeah. because. Here's the thing, though. If Baltimore offers him a job, he basically has to take it. I mean, like, think about it. Like, uh, you know, like it, it's different because it, the the longevity of running backs is different than quarterbacks. But yeah. you know, there was a the, when Ray Rice was released. I would say like about a year and a half, two years afterwards is mm-hmm. like when the stink had finally died off. Yeah. Like where he could have gotten another job. And there were people talking about like, do you think somebody will bring in Ray Rice or, and he was still in game shape. He, 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 he said like he was it. in game shape. Yeah. He, he uh, was showing up at places looking like he was ready to play, Yeah, but nobody ever offered him that contract and he's never going to get it now because he just has been out for too long. Yeah. But I'm saying like, it, it's one of the, you know, Oh, maybe he'll play in the XFL. <laughs> or the uh, what's the other one? The the pothead league or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was trying to remember what the rule difference was. The rule difference is it's exactly like the NFL, but you can smoke pot. <laughs> That's right. We don't care about the uh, marijuana rules in the huddle. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully in the stadium too. Shit, uh, wouldn't that be nice? Like, hey, beer stands and pot stands. <laughs> Oh God! God can you imagine, can you imagine how, how much pot's yeah, gonna cost? Gonna <laughs> how much is the joint at the stadium oh, if they're gonna man. sell it to you? Oh, I, all I'm thinking about is like eight dollar Coors Lights, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> get your thirty five dollar joints. But you 30, know what? Got your joints here. You know what? There are people. Oh there yeah, people. I know. <laughs> Because the other thing is they're gonna they're gonna frisk you before you get in to make sure yep. you're not bringing any outside weed. Yep, just getting just, patted down. All God right. damn it! <laughs> Got the dog walking around. <laughs> you. What's what's with the dog, man? Oh no, it's it's to keep out the paraphernalia. We're not gonna arrest you. We just want to toss it. It's gonna be an un- unusual number of balloons in the b- <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> uh, it's like a clown's birthday in here. <laughs> Only the truly degenerate <laughs> listeners would even get that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on quickly because we only we're already over a half hour. Uh, there's only four teams left in the NFL. Playoffs will move on. Yeah. Uh, it, anyone but the Patriots. Anyone but the <laughs> Patriots. I mean, I'm just I'm just going ahead. I'm thinking ahead about what your question might possibly be. Flash is uh, Flash is in the comments uh, watching the show right now. Friend of the fl- friend of the show, Flash. Um, uh, your team can cheat, and the QB gets suspended for four games. Uh, easy way in. I, is she making a reference to her own team? I would assume mm. that he would cheat and get suspended for four games. Although uh, New England's got to be looking for a new quarterback coming up in the next. Oh, year maybe or two, she right? was. Maybe she was saying something about. Uh, RG three, like spiking Joe's drink. Oh, like if earlier in the season, she would have just like, he would have popped some like a, uh, human growth hormone into oh, Joe's smoothie. 
and then he tests positive, and then he's out for four weeks. And then, I mean, or he could uh, RG three could have just and then def- it's RG three's time to shine. Mm-hmm. He could have just deflated some balls and then let the refs know. <laughs> Apparently, that's how you get suspended for a few games. Um, but nonetheless, uh, four teams in: uh, Patriots, Chiefs, Chiefs, and then Rams and Saints. Yes. Uh, so we have a chance here. Uh, at an LA, not an LA Super Bowl, but uh, an LA team in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Any? I mean, I, uh, from this point on, I, I, I would, I would say I'm rooting for them mm-hmm. just because uh, I don't really care about any of these teams in particular. Uh, I think a golf Mahomes uh, Super Bowl would be an uh, exciting Super I Bowl. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm fine with that. I think that uh, <laughs> Drew Brees is. Uh, having one of his best seasons, so it would be hard to take him out. But, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, it's pretty much a 50-50 spot for each of these each of those teams at this point. So, And, I mean, at this point, uh, either way, the Super Bowl is likely to get, like, 70 combined points because all of the teams right now are it's the all ones offense, that are going to – Yeah, yeah they're going to put up 40 points and nobody plays <laughs> any defense. So – I guess we'll see. <laughs> Super, fast forward to Super Bowl Sunday where it's fourth quarter and it's six nothing. And we're just like, what the fuck have we been watching for the last three? <laughs> what? And where did these teams come from? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. Uh, anyway, uh, so that was uh, sports ball for the week. All right. Our little thing errored there for a second. I wasn't sure I was going to get back in time. Good thing that's nice and long. A nice long transition. Um, so, uh, on the agenda. Yes. The shutdown goes on, and I want to talk about that. But um, the president found his way, a way to get back into the news without even talking about the shutdown. Yeah, so... Uh- <laughs> Trump and uh, Putin have met a couple times since he's uh, taken the oath of office. I think four, to be exact. I, I believe that's right. Probably a couple before that, too. But, you know, we haven't heard the testimony about those meetings yet. And usually when you have a meeting with a foreign leader, uh, there's... 100% of the time. Not usually. 100% well, no, 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 of the no. time. I'm saying, I'm saying usually when you meet with a foreign leader, there's multiple people in the room. Yes. No, 100% of the time. You would never meet privately with them. No, I, I I heard a couple stories about like Obama would have uh, private conversations with uh, certain world leaders that he had like more than one though. Y- never one on one. You would, right, you right, would right. meet with like uh, 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 Angelica, not Angelica, Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel, and um, France, Macron, right, Macron. So they'd Macron. all get together, and there's nobody else in the room because both those guys speak English, so you could yeah. speak. But it would never be one on one. You wouldn't because you don't like the optics of you and the German chancellor meeting one on one and then having to go out to the group of eight and be like, well, what are you two fucking talking about? Yeah. So you have a third person in there and you're like, no matter what, if, you know, um, what does it say? Uh, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But so the rule the only is way two people can be, yeah. Yeah. The rule is that you would always have for optics sake, you always have at least one other person in the room. And generally speaking, you have way more than that. You have the staffs and the translators and even if uh the, the German Chancellor and the uh French president are in the room and they're speaking English, they would still have a translator there for that like uh what was the Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Okay. Oh, yeah. No, just to make sure I understood what that word was. Yeah. Yeah, Give it to me in my native tongue. Um, But that being said, not just usually. Sorry. I got a job offer and Mm. I don't think I'm going to take it. Mm. Well, not a job offer. It was a posting for a job. Okay. Uh, So funny thing, just as an aside real quick, because I brought it up. uh, There's a a lot of people out there who I think realize that... uh, there's not a lot of film production going on mm-hmm. and they're trying to like undercut or like try not undercut, but like little they're ball. just like, Oh, here that uh town's a little bit dry right now. Well, we're uh, putting together a little uh, production. Maybe mm-hmm. you'd like to be involved. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't pay your full rate. Only $50 a day. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, would you rather be on set or would you rather make 50 bucks a day? And then you, <laughs> you start like sitting there going like, no, I'm not taking your $50 a day. Like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. And then, like, a week and a half passes, and it's just like, so $50, does that also include all the food on set? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, do I have to pay uh, my own gas? My <laughs> own gas out to Simi Valley. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, well, it's okay. $50 a day. I don't know if I can turn it down. 
<laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how like, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, more famous actors who like just get in like the dry spell, like Lindsay Lohan, oh, like <laughs> she's yeah. just like not working for like a year. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder if I'm like, somebody just like calls her up every once in a while. It's just like, Hey, we're doing a student film this weekend. You want to just get on set? And it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Why not? I can't just wait for this offer to come. <laughs> anyway, back to the topic. Yeah. So. Why is it important that that 100% of the time the president is not alone with one world leader? Uh, So that there can be discussion about what happened in the room. Yes. And so that, you know, like we keep our keep our ducks in order. Uh, So the the FBI doesn't open up an investigation how you might be a counterintelligence agent. So, I mean, basically what this boils down to is that the uh, four times that Trump met with Putin, uh, one of them had a. Tillerson in the in the yes. meeting, but only Tillerson and a translator, uh, and then the other three apparently only had translators, and none of the notes uh, of that meeting had they, they were taken by Donald Trump, according to a New York Times yes story uh, that was tweeted over the weekend. And he did not allow anyone else to take notes. Nope, uh, I, that's such a he confiscated any notes that were taken. I suppose mm-hmm. yes, yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. It it just makes me. Uh, It'd be like if I had a drug problem mm-hmm. and you, you, every single time I did drugs in the apartment, you like got in my case about it. Yeah. Like if I was smoking crack on the couch or something like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like uh, multiple times a day after you started yelling at me about it, I was just like, oh, I'm just going to go for a walk. You're just like, you're not going for a walk to smoke crack, are you? It's like, no, no, no. no. You sure. know, I just started, just recently I decided I'm going to start taking more walks. <laughs> Recently, like after I yelled at you for smoking crack on the couch? Yeah, you know, it just really opened up my mind to the possibility of walks. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, what's that in your pocket? What do you have there? Walking materials. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you but later. But I mean, like, you know, that's the same sort of thing that's going on with Trump here. It's just yeah. like, hey, there seems to be a whole lot of uh, uh, noise about you and Putin and maybe him having some sort of influence on you. That's uh, kind of crazy, right? Yeah. That's crazy. really crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so uh, you mind if we see the notes? Oh, don't no, notes aren't around, boss. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no notes. Sorry. It's like wasn't there a translator there? No, mm, nope. Pretty sure not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we have the, we have the record showing that the the translator was there. Mm, I don't I don't recall that. I don't but, remember that happening. I think he was the wrong translator. I mean, honestly, I'm you know, and uh, I don't want to. I didn't want to get somebody in trouble. Yeah, but uh, somebody sent somebody who speak uh, Botswana. Also, uh, uh, didn't speak English. Just yeah. only Botswana. <laughs> yes, only Botswana. only Botswana. It was very odd. And then I spoke to him in Botswana for a few minutes because I know Botswana. <laughs> I am one of the best Botswana seekers in the history of the the United States. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to embarrass everybody else with how fluent I am in it. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I, I basically told him uh, there's no need for you to take any notes because we are going to be speaking Russian, another language I speak. Perfectly. Almost fluently. I, yeah. Why would they even need, think I needed a translator? I don't. I don't understand it. I'm a man of great prodigiousness. <laughs> I speak multiple languages. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, not English. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why anyone bo- bothered not to teach me that one. But you know, every other language I speak incredibly well. And uh, this uh, news came at the same time that it was announced that the FBI had actually opened up a counterintelligence. Investigation. Just to be fair, the news was new. Yes. The new the news of that was new. Uh, the action the was actual not. action of it happened uh after Comey was fired. Yes. So, so some uh, eighteen months ago? Yeah, and uh, you know, probably not surprising because uh usually uh when you fire the FBI director, it uh sends off some red flags of the FBI. See, and I think that's the that's an easy <laughs> way out. It's an easy way out to say, like, oh well he fired the FBI director. I think though that like the way he fired him and like all the stuff oh, yeah, around yeah, yeah. it is yeah. what it caused. It's not <laughs> like hey, 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 wait, wait, what do you mean you're firing our boss? Let's look into this. It's like, uh, that seemed like uh, seemed like some Russian agent would do. Maybe we should look into that. I think. Well, I mean, it's it, it again. It's not about firing. You could fire the FBI director all you want. Sure. Uh, usually, what starts putting up red flags is when you start asking for loyalty and hey, why don't we? Why don't we let this Michael Flynn thing go? Yeah. And uh, I think all of that leading up to the firing was the uh, right. cataclysmic event that allowed <laughs> this to start taking place. But Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't know what you guys want anymore. Like, I, uh, I was I was talking to my mom earlier, and we we're talking about like how 
sometimes uh, just in the nature of democracy, some people, somebody gets in charge mm-hmm. and you know, even though 55 to 55% of the country might support something and 45 doesn't uh, that 45 will win every once in a while. You'll oh, get yeah, a Republican a, in, uh, as a president and then gerrymandering all, this, yeah, and all sorts of ways of that. abortion and all these sort of things. Like sure. they, they start going a little bit more right than where the country as a whole might be. Sure. Uh, but the, these wall people, I just don't know. I don't know what I don't know what to tell them. Like you're, you're being outnumbered two to one in terms of like people who don't want this stupid wall. Oh, you mean by logical people yeah. who understand that in 2018, 2019, that a wall will do nothing. Yeah. I, also, I also like all the people who are like sharing videos of like Pelosi and Schumer like talking about how we need more border security. Yeah, which is just an easy way to appease people essentially i mean like really politicians have been doing this for you know 30 something odd years now. also <laughs> um they, they just talk about like we need to double the border security and then nobody knows what that number is no. nobody knows what doubling it means nope. and then when we double it nobody seems to notice no nope. and uh you know I, here's the thing uh what like the problem is i just feel like I, I i have to sit down with each of them and like discuss like all the moving parts yeah. of their art like because they just don't understand like how wrong they are all so the time i woke up early i uh, not early but uh i'm in morning on saturday and i was like you know what i'm up a little early let's just uh let's take a little cruise on over to facebook i'm not there mm-hmm. a lot I'm just let's just troll some people i'm just gonna get <laughs> into fights i'm gonna go down i know i'm gonna find it on my timeline i'm just gonna spend my day fighting people in the comments mm-hmm. about the wall and what I realized is that in more than two conversations, I brought up the fact that people who are coming across the border and drugs, it always gets back to drugs and arms and everything else coming across the border, come across in trucks that number one, stupid people think that, Ill- that illegals are like backpacking millions of pounds of drugs across the border yeah. every year, which you're stupid. They, <laughs> Like a human being can maybe carry 30 pounds by themselves. Like how is it? For that a sustained all, distance. Yeah. yeah. For, by, through the desert yeah. and the mountains to get into the country. No, what they're doing is they're putting it's it in It's not cars. like a job interview where they ask if you can lift 50 pounds. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like one time. <laughs> yeah. I just lift, no, this is carrying it across can the desert. Can you lift a case of paper? And for the most part, these people who are coming in are coming in with nothing. The clothes on their back and two jugs of water. That's how they're crossing the desert. Yeah. So that was one thing. When people are dumb. And, and when I finally got them to understand that, like, oh, uh, well, the cars are what's bringing it across. Then I got this lovely number, again, on more than two occasions. Well, once the wall is built, that won't be a problem. Because people they, not allowed to drive to because and from they think the go. wall <laughs> is going to go all the way across the border with no holes in it. And I'm like, are you arguing to me right now that we're going to stop transiting the border with Mexico? It, just no traffic allowed across the border? <laughs> yes. They believe we're building the Great Wall of America. Yeah. No holes in it, just solid stone for a thousand miles. And yeah. I'm like, okay, so that's not that's not what this is. It's just filling in the gaps, like building this big fence across the desert. But when you get to, you know, Mexicali or when you get to Juarez, there will be a hole in the fence. Where people well, I don't see much point in that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Welcome um, to the argument. Yeah, uh, but then, of course, the conceding of like, oh, I don't see much point in that, but we have to do something. And at least he's keeping a campaign promise and he's doing something. But he's not. The, uh, of course not. I, I, did you see Wolf Blitzer's t- uh, tweet? Which yeah, he like retweeted. Check, yeah. He retweeted himself like three times this week saying, by the way, look it, look it up, Wolf Blitzer's tweet, where he asked the president, Specifically during the campaign, what will you do if you don't get a check? And what was what's he going to do? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. I will get a check, and if they make me wait, it just got ten feet higher. Yeah. And where are we now? Uh, we're paying for it. Oh me yeah, and you. We are <laughs> one paying for it because tariffs are going to be how we pay for it. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Americans pay the tariffs, not the companies. And two, we are and t- we don't get the money. No. It's not like we get a check from Mexico. We like are personally. We're like, also twenty some days into a government shutdown over Congress, not Mexico, funding the wall. Yeah, which is now, by the way, as of Saturday, the longest government shutdown in American history. 
and no end in sight. Really, <laughs> it almost seems like it's not about the wall. Hmm. Like, <laughs> weird, weird how that is. Uh, government workers miss their first paycheck. Uh, there's an estimate that says that uh, I think mm. it was sixty percent of uh, government workers are two paychecks or less away from homelessness and not being able to pay their bills. Yeah. So that means we are two weeks, less than two weeks away from most government workers defaulting on their bills, meaning being kicked out of their apartments, losing their livelihood. Yeah. I mean, just I mean, everything, right? Yeah. So Another one that uh, even if you're not a government employee and you're just like, well, how does this affect me? We talked about the, uh, the planes last year. There's oh, no... Yeah. Uh, no, uh, people inspecting the planes to make sure they're safe. Uh, there's also nobody inspecting the food. Yeah. So about 80% of the food that is going out has not been inspected by anybody at the FDA. So, uh, uh, if you are worried about getting E. coli or something like that, uh, good news. It's, <laughs> it's the you, age of Aquarius. Uh, if you have some questions, uh, or if you wonder yourself, Hey, what's the big deal? I'd like you to read The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. It's <laughs> yeah. not a long book, and uh, just uh, it'll give you an idea of what people will do when they know nobody's watching. Yeah. So, And now we know nobody's watching. Nobody's watching the airports. They're shutting down terminals because TSA won't work. Uh, they are, the planes are basically unsafe. Uh, you know, they're call, recalling more people to work without pay to try and fill in gaps. Yeah. Um, the... Airline industry is talking about raising ticket prices so that they can privately pay some inspectors just to make sure the planes are safe, <laughs> which boggles my mind. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, food's not getting inspected. By the way, um, all y'all who think you're going to get your, uh, your uh, taxes back, nope, now you can't file taxes uh, for your tax return while, um, while the government shut down. You can file, you just can't get your return. Oh, yeah, they're not yeah. going to say anything back. You can send it to them, but they're not going to say yeah, anything back. Yeah, by the back. way, if this thing goes into April, you still got to pay your taxes. Oh, yeah. But uh, you ain't going to get it back until yep. they decide to reopen this thing. So. Yep. Um, it just nothing is better. Everything's worse. And we're doing it over a wall. So, and, and I know that the, there was a story this week that said that uh, finally it looks like Mitch McConnell realizes that he's getting some blame for this. And much as we predicted weeks ago... Now they're talking about, oh, well, listen, that 100 to 1 bill that we passed, maybe the House will uh, vote on that one as well, mm -hmm. and we'll send that to the president and make him veto it so that we can actually vote on it again. Yeah, so you're going to override it. Override it and reopen the government. Um, but uh, that'll require the votes of people like, uh, like Steve King. Well, in the House, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who... I don't know. I think feel like he would back the president because he backs the president on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, his belief that there are good people on both sides and white nationalists aren't so horrible. Yeah, what's the problem with white nationalists anyway? Hmm. <laughs> Steve Why King quote, it? by the way. That's uh, not yes. me. Not me opening. <laughs> can we openly? <laughs> can we pull that, please? <laughs> Just pull that little clip if somebody would. Um, yeah, but I, it's uh, it's like uh, you hear from people that saying like, oh wait, so I can have they can have black pride, but I can't have white pride. Yep. <laughs> yep, you can. That, that's how that works. Yeah. Um, because we, we meaning white people, I suppose in general, mm. uh, my ancestors, although to a lesser degree, uh, took people from Africa and brought them here. Mm. And thus they have no culture. They, well, they have no connection to their ancestors' culture. So right. they create culture here. That's what black power means. Yeah. Culture, power of the well, people it's like, here. like, you know, like I'm Irish. Right. Because I happen to know that my family comes from Ireland. Yes. But uh, if you were descendant of somebody who was just brought over here from Africa, you have no idea. Yeah. You have no idea where, where upon Africa you are. Don't know if you know. Big continent. Very so, big continent. Uh, although, depending on who you ask. Uh, yeah. Um, but th that's the thing. is that it, Rather than saying white pride, if you said something like Irish, Irish pride, pride. yeah. And there's a parade. I'm proud of being Irish. There are parades about it, yeah. and we can celebrate it. We celebrate culture, and that's what it's about. Like, you know, black power, black pride is about the culture. Irish pride is about the culture. English pride is about... I, mean, I don't really even think that's a thing. Yeah. They don't really care that much about no. it. But, uh, you know, like uh, Scotland, we wear the kilts, and we do... Germany, but... 
Okay, that's frowned upon a little bit. But um, the, you know, we, we have pride in our culture. Some German culture is okay. Some, some German things. Uh, oh, the, the later Hosen. Yeah, yeah, yeah anything know, before. And <laughs> 1800s or before. Bavaria <laughs> before. That's really what we focus on. But uh, that's the point, is that it's, it's about culture, and you can't say white because white's not a culture. That's, that's the whole point. Um, so, um, yes, it's different, Steve King. Um, and yes, you're a racist. And uh, my argument, of course, is that <laughs> nothing's going to change. By, by the way, if this is your first, uh, first introduction to Steve King as racist, first oh. of all, welcome. Welcome. Uh, uh, we've been here for a while. Yeah, it's, it's been going on for quite some time. How long so. have you been in Congress? About that long. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Six years or something like that. I feel like I heard that recently. I think it was longer than that. I feel like he's a, he was in there during Bush. So... I'll double check. Maybe not. Or maybe he replaced a guy who is just like him from Bush. Oh, maybe. Could be that. It's like, it's just a hard R district. A hard R district in more <laughs> ways than one, I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, you I know think it, I mean? I'm pretty sure it's just the entire state of... Iowa? No, Chuck yeah. Grassley. That's, he's a congress... Or a senator. Ah, okay. Yeah. Senator Grassley. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah. Uh, a fourth district. So, I guess there's four. Yeah, there's four of them. Okay. I thought it was three and one, one Democratic district in Iowa, but nonetheless. Let's see here. He's been a Trying racist for a very long time. He's he has. been in Congress for a shorter time than that, I would assume. But uh, he's uh, not the first objective thing that he said, not the first time they've talked about censuring him, um, but the first time that they're actually uh, getting to it right now. So Yeah, so uh, has served since 2003. Yeah, yeah. He was originally part of Iowa's 5th Congressional District. But the redistricting. But, yeah, in 2013, they got they uh, bumped the number down to 4, and now he's the 4th. So, so, good news for the, the country. Um, looks like some states, like Iowa, are getting less congressional districts, <laughs> which is good news, just no, not nearly one fast less, yeah. Not nearly fast Still enough. two senators, but you know. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. Um, yeah. But, um, so I guess we'll see. Uh, I still don't think that they're going to do anything. He'll come up for, he lost his committee ships, but you can't just be in Congress. You have to be on a committee unless you get censured. So or we'll unless see you get sent to some committee that doesn't have a lot of like. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, uh, I would really love to see King on the uh, green initiative committee <laughs> green new deal yeah it's like uh, ryan dorsey where uh the, the guy answered that like a mad lib that would make ryan dorsey's head explode i feel like steve king on the uh, green initiative committee would just be like what are you talking about we can't use wind farms that'll slow the wind down and the earth will get hot <laughs> slow the wind down oh God, how I hate stupid people. <laughs> what, what if we capture all the sunlight and then it's not sunny anymore? I'm right. Like this is something we need to worry about. Why don't um, we just pull our, put all our solar far, farms in Iowa? Anyone disapprove? Me, I disapprove vehemently. Here oh, well, I didn't hear any of this. <laughs> oh yes. Right, so the entire state of Iowa is now a solar panel, and they were done. And done. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, um, I, I don't know what's going on with her. Uh, I feel like she is realizing her uh, her microphone, and it was cute at the beginning, but now uh, I'm questioning. Yeah, I'm, questioning. I'm still I'm still enchanted. Mm, I'm still waiting for. I I think I, I, listen. I, I, I for all the years that we've been doing this podcast. Uh, I think you could say I've I've uh, I've leaned a little bit more left. Over the years, you've moved left. Yes, moved left a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you went. You've gone. You've not quite gone from national socialist to socialism, but you know, there's something in the middle there. I suppose <laughs> somewhere in between those two. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think she's she's still trying to fire, figure it out. So we'll yeah. see. Um, well, and one thing she's hopefully not thinking about and not trying to figure out is a campaign for president in 2020. A lot of people, however, are. Uh, we, well, she can't. Yeah, so. I, well, I didn't stop Ted Cruz. Uh, he, <laughs> he ran even though he couldn't. So, by the way, better or worse with the beard? Did you see the beard? I've seen the beard. Yeah. yeah I, he looks like the, the post-divorce dad. Yes, yeah. right? But also, I'm going to um, try something new here to see if people like it. <laughs> makes me slightly less likely to punch him in the face, but 
I actually start listening to what he says. Like I sit there you and know, just dr- don't hear him, and I'm like, I just want to punch you in the face. I think that less, but now I'm listening to him. You know what? You know what I think might totally change Ted Cruz if we gave him some like dark black glasses okay. with the beard, because then he could like sit there and do this thing all the time, and then people would start thinking he's more like intellectual, solemn, and intellectual. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It would be a wor- It would be a weird place to go with Ted Cruz. Yeah. Like maybe a pipe. <laughs> I can see a pipe. Uh, but don't smoke anything illegal because uh, Texas is not <laughs> friendly to marijuana. Um, Wacky Ted. Wacky Ted. Uh, so <laughs> I think we talked about three weeks ago that, uh, oh, you know, Obama started in the fall of 2006. Yeah. So it seemed like we were a little behind. And quickly, we are catching up now. Um, yeah, we, this, this is the season for it. Yeah, we joked that uh, Martin O'Malley officially not running for president. Thank God. Uh, it looks like Eric Garcetti maybe, but he hasn't announced anything yet. I'm still seeing a lot of ads from his super PAC, though. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, and of course, <laughs> those have nothing to do with Eric. Those yeah. are all his super PAC, which has nothing to do with him. Yeah. So There's I guess certainly we'll not a secret Twitter account with only two followers, one of them who happens to be the head of the super PAC. Yeah. So uh, there's no way to... Uh, Get a message out there if uh, need be. Certainly not. Um, but uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Warren has announced an exploratory committee to run for president. Uh, I think, who's the other one? Gildebrand? No. Well, Castro is the only other one who's officially announced. Gildebrand, uh, senator from New York, has said that she's considering forming an exploratory committee. So mm-hmm. I suppose that's testing the water somewhat. Um, who's the other one uh, from Hawaii? Oh God! Is she running? Yeah, she said she's gonna. She's th- considering forming an exploratory committee as well. Don't do it. <laughs> so I can't. I can't remember her name, but she. she uh, there's there's a male version of this, and there's a female version of this. The male version of this has often been. Oh uh, wait, no, not Hawaii. Hmm. The male version of this often goes with the uh, uh, sort of uh, mansplaining ideal of of uh, men. Oh, Gabbard. Gabbard. Gabbard? Yeah, Tulsi Gabbard. Or, is that who it is? Damn it. Where's she from? Uh, I can't remember. Hang on. If I don't know you immediately, I mean, like, I'm pretty... I'm pretty dialed in. Oh my God. So here's a good website that has is kind of keeping ties. Apparently there is a Bob Corker for president... I've heard I've heard say of this. But. Yeah, he's a Republican. Uh, Larry Hogan, which Hogan's not going to run against Trump. No, I mean he might be the one because he, he can run and lose and keep his governorship. Yeah, but he's going to run and lose, which is going to be a pro- <laughs> like. There's no the time for the time for Hogan would would be four years from now. No, I would say I would agree with that. Like uh, the the 2024 election, uh, assuming that a Democrat wins in 2020, uh, would would be his best course of action, I think. So here we go. Here because he could be the sensible middle yeah. of the Republican Party going forward. Once Trump's out. And yeah, I mean, like, uh, assuming middle. that 2020 plays out the same way that 2018 did, mm-hmm. then you're looking at a complete slaughter of the Republican yeah. Party <laughs> in a lot more places where they could get slaughtered. Uh, you might, you, you very well could see all three branches of government going Democratic in that one swing. And then at that point, the Republicans have to seriously sit down and like look at what what they've done, and say like, all right, so we need somebody who who can find the middle here, and that might be a good time for a Hogan to come out where he's like, listen, Democratic state, moderate, moderate, yep, Republican, like uh, I I believe in all the things that most people believe in, regardless of political uh, leanings, uh, but you know I'm a little bit more friendly to the business, so let's uh, let's get this thing going, shall we? Uh, we're open for business in Maryland. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> uh, so apparently, uh, going back, Joe Biden said that he was going to make his decision over Christmas. We have not heard anything, which makes me think maybe a no from Joe. But I guess we'll see. Um, on this list of, I'm going to go through who they suspect, but I'm not going to read all of these. I like, I like uh, did you hear Joe's thing about uh, uh, millennials? Oh, yeah. No, that might have undone him, by the yeah. way. So. Uh, Joe, Joe Biden, if you didn't hear, is a... Uh, and uh, he was being interviewed by the L.A. Times, I think. And they said, uh, so uh, what do you what do you think about the strife of millennials? And then he started did his like, oh, those 
little complainers. Like, yeah. we've all gone through problems and figured out a way through it. It's not nearly as bad for them as it has been for us, and blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, he bought a house for... Twenty thousand dollars. Six was, six thousand dollars. <laughs> Joe Biden's first yeah. house cost. Now, of course, he made a the lot median, less. The median cost of a house in LA right now is six hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Just as a yep. as an aside. Thanks, Joe. Uh, okay, so Joe's up for up top of the list, and I think that he's probably the front runner for all intents and purposes. Yeah, he's the Clinton going in. Yeah, uh, Michael Bloomberg. Although he's not really a Democrat, don't run. Yes, please don't run, Mike. Uh, Cory Booker, although I think he knows that 2020 is not his race. He should probably wait till 2024. But who's to, who's to say? Uh, my favorite, um, South Bend's Mayor Pete, who I sent you a story about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys. Well, next week we're going to do the the who we want, right? Yeah, yeah like, we should we should look we can look through that. Uh, Julian Castro has actually announced. Yep. Um, Former mayor of San Antonio. Uh, and U.S. US Housing Secretary. Yeah. Uh, Under Obama. Clinton's on this list. Uh, also Hillary? Clinton, yes. Don't run. Don't, don't run. do it. Uh, Tulsi please, Gabbard. Please don't put us through that again. Tulsi Gabbard, Congresswoman from Hawaii. Not Senator from Hawaii. Yeah. T- Congresswoman from Hawaii. Uh, Mayor Garcetti. Let me... Is there a picture there of her? Yes. Okay, so I don't, I don't know Guarantee her. Guarantee you haven't seen her before. I, I, I think I'm thinking about the senator from Hawaii who's like a real nutcase. Uh, Hirono? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she uh, is a uh, Asian Pacific Islander. And yeah. she would be, she was the first Asian Pacific Islander in Congress or in Senate. And like, uh, she would be the first. Yeah, but she, so. she's, she's got the, the woman version of mansplaining going on there. Where like, at, anytime I see her on CNN and it's just like, you know, well, the, the Trump administration has said this. What do you what do you say to those claims? It's just like what you don't know about this situation is like every sentence starts with like, you don't know this, but I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like maybe we do know. All right. We Shut up. Know. Yeah. Um, quickly through the list. Gillibrand, like we said, uh, apparently Andrew Gillum gave a uh, a non-responsive answer to the question on an interview this week. So mm-hmm. people are saying he might be in to remind you, he is the former Tallahassee mayor who nearly defeated um, DeSantis DeSantis uh, in Florida. Uh, Kamala Harris has apparently has feet on the ground in Iowa, although she's not saying whether she will or she won't, but she has people on the ground in Iowa. Um, Eric Holder um, has been raising money Don't for, do it. for a pack, but apparently it's not for him. It's for a pack. Uh, Mitch Landrew in Louisiana. I actually follow a couple of reporters from Louisiana and they're saying that that's the rumor is that he's going to run. Um, Beto, of course, don't run Beto. Um, I think Beto can't can't help but not run. I mean, like, nah. Oh, uh, Andrew Yang. I don't know if you've heard this. He's actually in the race, and he calls himself a Democrat, but he's really a Bernie Crat. Um, but he's a entrepreneur. He's not a politician, so hmm. he's in as a Democrat. And with Elizabeth Warren, Bernie, um, Starbucks CEO, and Disney CEO are Schultz both, and Iger, yeah, are both uh, talked about. So that's where we are. Like literally, a few weeks ago, we, we were know like, that hey. Tom Steyer is not going to run. What's that? Tom Steyer is not going to run. Why is that? Well, he he announced he wasn't going to run. Uh, I I think that that's the it's a early the guy who's that. doing the impeach the president. Yes, he said he's not doing it. So hey, we'll see. <laughs> see what happens we'll in see. a month. It's a long yeah. time. It's a long time away. Um, so anyway, so uh, again, in two months, we went from like nobody to a full field. And here's what I'll tell you about the, the non-answer. Like Andrew Gillum's non-answer is, what do you think? Do you think <laughs> I should run? Do you, should I run for yeah. president? What do you think? What do you think? So I guess we'll see. Mm. But um, meanwhile, uh, back to real issues, local issues. Uh, let's just kind of like lightning round this. Local okay. issue, LA. Biggest issue happening in the city right now. Uh, LA USD is on strike. That's right. Uh, for those of you who are not hyper local, that's the uh, LA United School District, Los Angeles Unified, School, Unified District. School District. That's yeah. right. LA Unified School District uh, is their teachers on strike, second largest teachers union in the country. Um, yeah. Basically, in the crappiest day in LA in the last few weeks, thousands of teachers turned up downtown to protest uh, and didn't go to class today. I, so. I heard a rumor. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not. Yeah, but uh, apparently, there's more teachers in the city of Los Angeles than there are in the state of Maryland. I would imagine that that is true. I mean, it, it's like a 12 million person yeah. school district. So. I mean, LA Unified is uh, is a huge school district. So yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so they're on strike, uh, and of course, I, just so it's clear, fully support strikers. 
Uh, however, I have also read and understand that this is maybe an un, not a totally necessary strike, that this was a let's send a message by striking and that maybe they are not, they're asking for things that they know they can't get um, or that the, that the LAUSD simply cannot afford to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, my position always been pro worker and back the workers, but at some rate, you, the workers also have to say, what is it that we can actually expect? Well, you have to know like what the, I mean, you know, if you, if you said to your boss, like I, I, I need to talk to you uh, and then you go into the, to the office and say, uh, listen, I've been working really hard. Uh, I think I, I deserve a $5 an hour raise. Sure. And then they said, uh, wow, that's a little bit excessive. And then you went strike. Like, yeah, you got to know your time. Well, and, and I'm not saying that the teachers aren't haven't we been waiting patiently for their opportunity to get get some due. Yeah. But uh, uh, there seems to be a lot of of conversation that I'm hearing, whereas uh, this probably could have been handled a little bit better mm -hmm. uh, from the leadership Right, perspective not the teachers, of the teachers. themselves, yeah. but the leaders yeah. uh, who, really who are wanted trying to, to play this card a little yeah. hard. They wanted to send the message: we can strike, so we are going to strike. Um, but my, I guess my point was, if you if it's 1972 and you're GM auto workers and you're striking because you're asking for two dollars more an hour, and GM is the largest company in the world mm -hmm. making record profits, maybe two dollars an hour for all your workers is not too much to ask. Right. If you're GM auto worker in 2006 and yeah. you're asking for $2 an hour and GM is in bankruptcy and being bailed out by the U.S. government, maybe not the time. Maybe not the time to, to ask for that. Right. Um, maybe it's like, hey, what can we do to make the company better so that we can save the jobs of the people in our, our, our union instead of having those jobs go to Canada or Mexico? Um, so it's about timing. It's about knowing what the right thing to ask for is. I, I will say have my mom was a teacher for 30 years. She still works with the school board. My she, mom was a teacher as well. Yeah. So. so I have a lot of appreciation for the under the underappreciated teachers and the work that they do. I also have a uh, an understanding that they are underpaid. They're underappreciated. There's not enough of them. Especially LAUSD has a huge problem with over like packed school rooms and not enough resources. Um, and I think that a lot of what they're asking for is reasonable because a lot of what they're asking for is about the kids and not about well, their and salaries. Well, a lot but. of the things that they're asking for are, you know, like, so I was hearing uh, teacher interviews on a podcast this morning, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of... Uh, we... we <laughs> California passed this thing where all the schools are supposed to have Wi-Fi. Yeah. And our Wi-Fi has never worked. So they're paying for Wi-Fi. They're paying for the internet service. And yet our school doesn't have working Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's great that you did this thing where all the schools are supposed to have it, but we technically don't. Right. And you're paying for it. And you're paying for it. Yeah. So maybe fix that. Like, or, or like all these like other, like, you know, there's things like about like, there's 50 kids in the class, so there's not enough seats and some kids have to sit on the floor and stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's a little... I mean, uh, the problem with the uh, with education, much like the problem with health insurance, is that there's so many like it's hard to fix the problems that are visible to us right now because mm -hmm. there's a lot of underlying problems that would need to be fixed first. Yeah. So like uh, before you, I would argue that before you want to fix health care, like you know, like figure out your Medicare for all plan or something mm -hmm. like that, you probably want to get into why does it? Why do they charge you fifteen dollars for one band aid when you go to the emergency room? <laughs> Uh, another committee that Steve King, I would love to see him on. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. What do you mean this is a good idea? Uh, I'd like to propose a 70% tax on the 10%, 10 million or more. 70%. <laughs> Sorry. Leave yeah. me with only $3 million. That's not what it means, Steve. You don't know what it fucking means. <laughs> yes. Um, you crazy little socialist. But. I, 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 I would love it. It's just an odd couple style reality show of Ocasio Cortez and Steve King in an apartment by themselves. Uh, <laughs> you left your white right. sheets out here hanging on the couch. Wait a minute. These aren't sheets. He's a racist, by the way, just so, <laughs> just so it's clear. Um, but anyway, I, yes, I get your meaning that yeah. uh, there should be a good plan and we should all have. I mean, like, I, I, I'm. 
listen, I, if, if you're asking me for, for Corey's plan on mm-hmm. how to, how to fix the public education process, which by the way, I'm not the person you want to listen to on this. I don't know why you asked me, no. but, uh, I, I would, I would essentially say let's, uh, do our best to eliminate the teachers who shouldn't be teachers. Uh, because there's a lot of people who Should are dramatically underqualified for the yep. jobs that they have. Uh, and maybe to start luring better talent, start paying them better. Yeah. Uh, I know that's a pretty out there proposition, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I mean, like I think the best, I, I think time has proven over and over again that if, uh, you say that you're going to raise the standards of, what you are expected to get paid as a teacher yeah. and the best people will <laughs> compete for the best jobs. I mean, I think there's also people who are willing to take less money than they can make in the private sector Yeah, because they w- would love to teach. Right. But they also have to stay alive. And yeah. some places pay teachers not enough to live in the place where they are teaching. Well, I so, mean, LA, LA is a perfect example. There you go. It's really hard to live on a teacher's salary here. I mean, you're, uh, you're living three hours, two and a half hours away from the school where you I teach mean, at. So. It's, a, it's a similar problem that, that New York experiences too, because you know, if you teach in a Manhattan school, you don't, you live in Jersey. Yeah. Like you're, you're taking the train into Manhattan every single day. And you know, it, it it's really, I, I, th- I'm thankful for all the teachers that I ever had in my life. Well, 95% of the teachers <laughs> in my life. You know who you are. <laughs> you, you four people know who, who you are. Uh, but I, I just, I feel like, uh, if, if more of the money, more of the wasteful spending that happened in the school district was just happened to overpay people rather than like, paying for Wi-Fi that doesn't work. Yeah. Like that would be the, the, yeah, the number they use is the per pupil expense. Yeah. But if you actually bring it down to like, what do we spend on the pupil versus what do we spend on this ridiculous shit for the school? Your per per pupil falls dramatically. It's like, Oh, well we haven't updated books in uh, seven years, but everybody's got Wi-Fi and we have all of these brand new computers in the uh, administration. I'm like, yeah, you count that as your per pupil, but no pupils benefit from that. Yeah. So I don't really see uh, how it works. Well, but the other thing I was, I was talking to a, a teacher friend of mine in Maryland and, uh, they all have tablets. Yeah. So their school, every single student was issued a tablet. Uh, but it's not like a, you know, an iPad or something like that. It's like some cheapo crappy tablet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's the only thing the kids are allowed to have in class Yeah. is the, is the school issued tablet. But they also don't like let them do like put a case on it or anything like that. So almost all the students la- uh, tablets have been broken since the first week of school. Of course. And you can't get a new one. And they're kids and yeah. they just drop them. Right. And they leave them places and they're never charged and they're supposed to last all day. But yeah. they, they don't have the battery for that. Uh, and it's it's just uh, it's a lot of uh, a lot of trouble for so, like it seems like a wonderful idea. Like we're going to give every single student a lab a tablet. But at the same time, if it doesn't work. <laughs> It's not worth it. You know how you give a kid a textbook uh, that it never runs out of battery and that you don't have to worry about them breaking it and that they can carry around all the time? Mm -hmm. Give them an actual textbook. Yeah. It worked really well for us for a long time. Anyway, uh, how about we take a 3,000 mile skip and a hop and a jump right on down to the Baltimore corner? Ooh. Where you get the straight dope? Yes. So, uh, quickly, uh, news from Baltimore, uh, as we talked about last week. Uh, the commissioner candidate Fitzgerald had dropped out Mm -hmm. and we were promised by the mayor a full investigation. They are going to put the new, a new slew of candidates to their paces and they're going to involve the community and they're going to involve the city council. And after a lot of deliberation, they're going to produce a new candidate. And that took them exactly three days. Uh, (laughs) and now we have a new candidate for Baltimore City Police Commissioner. Yes, hold on one second. Are you pulling up his name? Yeah, because I actually didn't remember what his name was. Uh, it all happened so fast, I yes. wasn't prepared for so, it. So uh, to keep in mind, one of the things we talked about last week uh, was that the city council held a uh, meeting. Michael oh, Harrison. Michael Harrison. Yeah. Um, former former top cop in New Orleans. Who, yes. Uh, everything I've been hearing about is uh, he's like uh, it's like having LeBron James say that he's going to pick your team. Yes, and, uh, except for it, it really makes me wonder why uh, if uh, if there was a potential to possibly get the LeBron James of law enforcement, 
Uh, why we spend all this time with the Vince Carter of because the Vince Carter circa 2019 Vince Carter <laughs> law enforcement. Although he's a rock star, he is also a broken windows policing. Oh, uh, is he guy? Mm. So he's a rock star in the community. But yeah. By the way, did you hear about Carlos Mabel? No. Oh, the guy who got shot. Yeah, <sighs> shoveling snow. We've had the people shot sneveling, shoveling snow, shot by <laughs> giving money to a, a... No, stabbed in the neck Yeah, by giving money to a homeless person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so guy just, by the way, guy just shoveling snow, four o'clock in the morning, trying to make sure that his wife can get to work and not have slip on the pavement. And someone just walks up and shoots him three times in the head in the most Baltimore story ever. Yeah. Things that I have no comprehension on how to even deal with. For no reason. Appearing, apparently no reason. Just shot him. So, But I'm sure the new guy who focuses on broken windows policing will certainly fix the murder rate that uh, the last four guys who focused on broken windows policing couldn't fix. Um, but again, uh, we were talking about how they, they had a public comment period. And the number one thing, the overarching message was, one, we don't want this guy because we didn't participate in choosing him. And two, we would really like to participate in choosing someone. And we would really go along with you. You don't have to choose the guy we choose. We just want to be part of the process. And mm-hmm. if we feel like we're heard, we'll go along with you. And Pew, much to her uh, typical uh, you know, MO, ignored that completely, picked a guy from the previous process, and th- the uh, most ironic thing is the city attorney who was negotiating his contract was sitting in on those meetings with the public and being like, yes, no, we are looking forward to this ongoing process and working with you, knowing that he was leaving there and going and negotiating the, the yeah. contract with this guy. I just, it, again, uh, you, I say the most <clears throat> Baltimore story is the guy who gets shot uh, shoveling snow, but also this is also the most Baltimore story that you can have. Just let the government just out and out lying to the, to the citizens, doing what they want to do and this being like, mm, what are you going to do? Stop us. I mean, I, I really think that, that Pew doesn't want, doesn't want anybody else to be making these decisions for her, so she decided to throw out another name before a process could get started. Yep. Uh, which uh, usually, uh, it, when somebody, when I ask somebody to do a favor for me, if I'm just like, hey, Rob, can you go get me a Coke? And then instead, uh, he comes back a couple seconds later, I got my hand up waiting for my Coke to fall in my hand. Yeah. And then instead it's a, a hand grenade with a pin pulled. Yeah. Just like, Jesus Christ, Rob, you really fucked this situation up. Uh, I don't usually want you to, I, I don't want you to do any more tasks until I, I can make sure that I'm supervising Sorry. you. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Catherine Pugh has been handing out a lot of hand grenades here mm-hmm. and, uh, she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want somebody watching her. So she just decided to pull <laughs> I don't know. Like it's such a, such a, she, she's so desperate to like not get like called on her bullshit that she's just going full steam ahead. I feel like she just wants to, she wants to win, right? She's like, I, one of these has to work. One of these things has to work out and then they'll love me again. By the way, not, not quite, quite to the same, uh, uh, illegal nature and stuff like that. But, uh, Trump is to the Republicans as Pew is to the Democrats. Like yeah. she is the dumb. How, how did this person get elected version of the Democratic mayor? Like it's not, it's it's shockingly bad. And the fact that we've had so many like, it, is it just me? Like I feel like I know. Like I, I've talked to people who who are smart about politics and yeah. like really are are in on it in Maryland. Like yeah. And just none of these people want to run? Like, is that the... Nobody... It's a game of hot potato. That city is going to burn itself down, and yeah. nobody wants to be the one holding it when it happens. Oh, so. yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what we said with the SRB, and yeah, <laughs> Baltimore I mean, is a game of Russian roulette and stuff like I that. I think in the end, that's really what it comes down to, is that there are a lot of people who may step up and take the job after when it goes it, over the edge. <laughs> after P- uh, Pompeii burns? Yeah. Well, they yeah. want to be the savior. They don't want to be right. the one that watches it burn down. So... I mean, maybe that's part of it, or maybe it's just voters in Baltimore can't help themselves. And it was her turn, right? That was what we were saying during the election. It was her turn. She bided her time, and she deserved it. So now this is what you get. Welcome, Baltimore. <laughs> I want a I want a Republican to run. I want a really good Republican to run. Not for not for the sake of like making 
like Baltimore fall to all these Republican policies or something like yeah. that. I just want somebody who can call somebody on some shit. Hey. Uh, like, Larry, that's Larry the, Hogan doesn't run for president. Runs, runs for mayor of Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. 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 He's just like, because he would get attention. Yeah. I mean, you know, you wouldn't be able to just steamroll right through the Democratic nomination. Yeah. Hypothetically. I mean, like. Well, I mean, no, you would still, uh, it would be a full fight, though. It would be a primary process. And then, because nobody's running against Hogan. The right. Republicans. Right, right, right. Yeah. So then he gets to save all his war chest and you got to go through the primary and then go up against Hogan, right. who has been a vocal critic of Baltimore City and basically says, hey, I'm taking a lesser job because I can fix <laughs> speaking, this. Speaking of Hogan and uh, Baltimore City and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I haven't had time to get into the whole thing and I wanted to have all the details before yeah. I started talking about it publicly. But uh, Hogan has uh, announced a humongous crime initiative. That involves like all the different agencies of the state, yeah, basically coming together to crack down on crime. Uh, I think with sort of like an A B kind of goal of A cleaning up the city and B getting the opiate crisis under control and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of questionable things about like what exactly is happening with not all the news out yet. So we will get into that. We yeah. just don't know. Well, I mean, I think he, like Trump, as much as he would hate that comparison, made this broad sweeping announcement, and it's Without like... Without any details. Details are coming later. Don't worry yeah. about that. We'll get you the details. It was like the uh, Oscar most popular category. Yeah. That, like, it's, it's like, hey, by the way, we're doing this. Um, and I, my f- initial reaction was, this is Giuliani in the 90s, and there's no way that this will not result in more people getting locked up who shouldn't be locked up, and having the state murder more citizens in the effort of trying to stop drugs or stop the opioid crisis. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, look forward to that. Uh, but let's just, we'll, we'll do a little more. Once the details come out, I think we can talk about it more fully. It just, it's one of those like, um, great. It sounds great. Yes. We're going to, we're going to have $50 million and we're going to send police in and we're going to have 90 state agencies in there. And it's like, okay, great. What are they going to do when they get there? What's the plan? Yeah. Uh, we'll figure that out in a minute. So I guess we'll see. I mean, I guess there is part of, Part of the logic that uh, uh, to tie it into a Trump thing, like where he said, like, well, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to say when I'm going to negotiate, because then they how will know. they know? Yeah. It's yeah. like all the all these times where they announce, like, we're going to be doing bombings tomorrow. It's like, well, now they know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I'll just do the bombings and I won't tell anybody beforehand. And sure. then they'll tell I'll say it later. Yeah. Like there, there, there seems to be sort of a, a aspect of Hogan's just like, I'm doing something with crime, but don't worry about it. I'll tell you when I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'd like to know a little bit of the details. But I mean, I get that you can't tell me like, all right, on Thursday, we're going to go get Big Bob Johnson, yep. who is noted, noted drug dealer, Big Bob Johnson. Uh, but maybe just uh, the outline of a plan. Yeah, just just uh, give me the gist. Broad strokes. Yeah. yeah. What happens if it goes wrong? That's mostly what I want to what I want to know. <laughs> what? What what is a what is an unsuccessful operation look like? <laughs> oh, I can tell you what an <laughs> unsuccessful operation looks like. You know where you can find that? An unsuccessful operation? An unsuccessful yeah, where? Oh the other dot com. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, the hang on, hang on, let me go back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just felt like that was a really good transition yeah, to the end of the show. Oh, you know what? Uh, you know where you can find an unsuccessful operation? Where's that? Oh, the answer.com. Cordo, the answer.com. Oh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. What's that name, number again? 443-219-7595. Uh, you can find more of me at my website, CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com, which is a professional operation. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't be fooled by my association with this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> you can find more of me at Facebook.com forward slash Corey Baker Film. Uh, at Legend CB5 on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, movie reviews on YouTube. Uh, the next one will be uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, which will mm. come out tomorrow. And uh, Thursday, uh, I would like to release the uh, Mary Queen of Scots, which we saw yesterday. Yes. Uh, and enjoyed to a degree. Qualified, <laughs> qualified recommendation. And of course, you can find more of me at Robert N. Cheek on all your social networks, as you see right there. Uh, you can, of course, check out robertncheek.com, where you can find links to my political blogs, news website, and the books which are available on Amazon. Barrow's books. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, I am writing a lot, but uh, not a lot going on otherwise. So 
not really writing a lot either. Need to write a lot. That's really <clears throat> the message there. Should be doing more things. Yeah. Um, not really. Well, maybe uh, maybe shortly here you'll have uh, more time to... Working too much. Need to stop working so much. <sighs> maybe I'll just quit my job. That seems like a good investment. <laughs> I'm going to okay. bet on myself. <laughs> I guarantee I'm going to be a successful screenwriter by the end of the year. I might as well just quit my job right now. Anybody? <laughs> Help me. Feed. Little, uh, feed me. Little help. <laughs> you got some change here, man? Got some change here? Yeah, oh, God bless you. God bless you. Can I have a little change? A little change here, man? Oh, God bless you. <laughs> there was some article that I read that said uh, when people ask you, when uh, when dealing with the L.A. homeless, when mm-hmm. they say, uh, uh, can you spare any change and you don't want to give them money, uh, say not today as mm-hmm. opposed to I'm sorry because people don't like to hear I'm sorry. Yeah. They'd rather hear some other version of like next time I see you. Buddy. I can't I can't do it right now. Yeah. Uh, so I actually tried it. I said not today to a homeless person when I when they asked me for money. And then like literally as I'm walking away, I heard him just go like not today. What do I you expect me to run into you tomorrow, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I'll well, get you next time, buddy. Well, sorry about that. Sorry, man. <laughs> Should have just said sorry and just moved on. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. That'll teach you. Uh, that, uh, I I also feel really bad. I I I didn't give uh, money to the homeless all the time before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, every once in a while, like if I had some cash on me, I would, I would, uh, I would try and help out if I thought the situation was, uh, deserving enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, no, I just never have cash on me. So I can, I just never have anything. You know, so I think I can just wait. Like, <laughs> the homeless dude's going to step up on you with a square. Like, oh, sorry, bro, right here. Just hit $1 no, twice just, right there. Just put $2 in. I just need to get on the bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got you. All right. Well, uh, I think we've done good here today. Uh, we've done something. I don't know if it's good. But as always, you're listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. I don't have an extra thing to say. Do you have an extra thing to say? Uh, I mean, no. I'm tired and ready to go to bed. So, right. bye. See ya.